Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, if I said to you that I've just bought a new petrol car and it does 30 miles per gallon, I think everybody out there watching this will know that that's not a particularly efficient car. 30 is not very efficient. If I said it needs 70, then everyone would know that that's very efficient. It's gonna save me a lot of money on fuel. But when it comes to electric vehicles, it's a little more complicated than that. Not so much the figuring out how much it's gonna cost you, but partially because manufacturers in their infinite wisdom have picked one of two different methods on telling you how efficient their cars are. Some use miles per kilowatt hour, which is very similar to miles per gallon. I prefer that one, if I'm honest. Uh, and others use watt hours per mile. Now, this is something I don't think anybody, unless you own one anyway, really knows what is good, what is bad, what is average in terms of fuel efficiency. Is three miles per kilowatt hour efficient? Is that average? Is it, is, it, is it bad? Is it good? Is 350 watt hours per mile good? Is 250 watt hours per mile better than 350? Or is it the other way around? So it, it, it is quite confusing, but once I think it's explained properly and uh, I've shown you how to convert one to the other, if you're bothered, I'll do that at the end of the video. It is very straightforward. Um, then I think uh, it, it will be easier for you to understand what's going on in terms of fuel for an EV. So let's get on with what will turn out to be, I'm sure, another enthralling video for everybody involved. Oh, sorry, I'm just looking at the Smart Home Charge brochure. Now, channels like mine survive due to occasional sponsorships. I have no Patreon campaign. Um, so please do listen because not only will this help the channel out, it could actually genuinely save you money. And I don't put stuff on my channel if I don't think it's genuinely useful. I don't just take any sponsorship and believe me, I get inundated with offers. This effectively is a comparison tool. So out of all the electric vehicle based tariffs, so you're, I'm talking about your home tariff now, this will tell you which one is cheapest depending on which car you have. So let's have a look at this. Now, I currently own a standard Tesla Model 3 range plus. That's the battery size, that's the charge speed, that's the range according to the manufacturer. And let's say I do 200 miles per week. So I adjust that there and then it tells me how much, if you're on Octopus Go, for example, or EDF Go Electric, these are all EV tariffs from various uh, suppliers out there. Which one is cheapest and how much roughly it will cost you per year, per mile and for a single charge. So ultimately, this could genuinely save you money because you might be on the wrong tariff. If you charge at home, it's just as important as how much the petrol station costs down the road, for example. I've seen people drive another mile or two across town because it's one or two P cheaper per litre for petrol. So five, 10 minutes of your time could end up saving you tens or even hundreds of pounds on your tariff because that's effectively what's fueling your vehicle if again you charge at home. So please do look at that. I will put the link in the description below and as a pinned comment so you can go straight to it. And the more people that click on that, the better it looks quite frankly and the more likely future sponsorship deals for anyone are. So it's helping the channel out by checking this out. But again, I wouldn't put this up if I didn't think it was useful. And at the end of the day, it's free. You're not losing anything. You're not having to buy into this. And of course, they fit my home charger, they're still, albeit very busy, they're still fitting chargers around the UK, all of approved, all the usual stuff. So please visit smarthomecharge.co.uk or click on the link below, ideally. Now, in terms of what's efficient and what isn't efficient in EV world, I'm gonna to have to move over to that awesome whiteboard over there. Right, here we are, the whiteboard itself. Now, I've put a table here with miles per gallon in. According to a 2018 RAC study, the average miles per gallon for a new car in 2018 was 50, I think it was 50.4. So I'm gonna say that 50 miles per gallon is the average, which I would say is about right from my own experience. So 70 is definitely above average and 30 is below average. Now, of course, you can get less than 30 and you can get above 70 if you try hard enough, but ultimately these are about averages. So what is the equivalent in terms of miles per kilo hour and watt hours per mile. And then I'll show you the conversion or how to do the conversion later on in the video. So if we say that the average, because it's amber of course, that's below average, that's red, boo. And this is the efficient one, green. If we said that's green, that's amber, that's red, what would be the equivalent in mass per kilowatt hour? Now this isn't scientific as in 
energy used. It's not a, a direct equivalency of, uh, you know, how much you've burnt or created or used or any of that. This is in your head, what is average? Ooh, that's below average. Ooh, that's above average. So in miles per kilowatt hour, there's no real studies on this one. So I've had to use effectively five and a bit years of my own experience. And of course, speaking to many other people that I know with EVs. Um, so I've decided because it does change, you know, winter is less than summer. How you drive obviously has the biggest effect. Um, so what I've decided to go for is for average 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour. I would say that is the average for the average electric vehicle. Some of course will be more than that, some will be lower than that. That is the whole point of an average. And of course, all year round. If you drive economically all the time, you will see higher than that. If you've got an e-Nero, you'll probably again get better than that. If you've got a, a, an e-Tron, you'll get lower than that, I suspect. There's many variables, so I've had to try and pick the middle ground here. Um, now, for below average, I'm going to say 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. I'll explain kind of more what they mean later on, but effectively, if you get in that, that that's pretty bad. It's uh, maybe a sports version of an electric vehicle, or you're just driving around like a lunatic, who knows? Uh, now, what is good? It's effectively gonna be quite obvious is this, I'm gonna put five miles per kilowatt hour. For example, when I got the Skoda Citigo and I was hooning it around country roads during summer, granted, I got just over five miles per kilowatt hour. When I drove it economically to work and back in, in slow speed traffic, I got over six miles per kilowatt hour. But I've had cars that are more around this range as well. So again, this is about averages. And this is what I've decided after lots of umming, umming and ahhing of where to put it. So the equivalent in EV terms of average for me is this. In the UK, of course, and of course, if you're across the pond, this is UK gallons, not American ones. So yeah, I'd say 3.75 is, is pretty fair all year round. Um, but what is that in terms of watt hours per mile? For this, we're gonna to have to do a conversion. So it's exciting stuff because it involves maths. Well, I'll show you how I do the conversion in a second, but effectively 2.5 is 400 watt hours per mile. So in this case, the higher the number, the worse it is. 3.75 is 267. I have rounded these numbers up, of course. Uh, and five miles per kilowatt hour is 200 watt hours per mile. So anyone with a Tesla will be familiar with this. Anyone with, uh, well, most other cars will be familiar with this, but across all EVs, not just Teslas, not just Kia E-Neros, not just Nissan Leafs, I would say this for me is the average in terms of energy efficiency. Now this, again, as I said before, is the uh, easiest to understand for me because it's the closest to miles per gallon, miles per kilowatt hour. We buy our energy in kilowatt hours, so therefore all you have to do is say, well, I get charged 10 pence per kilowatt hour, so, these are the figures I need to be able to figure out how much that is going to cost me. Uh, what hours per mile? I'm not sure why some manufacturers choose this or ultimately why don't why they don't give you an option. Teslas, for example, use what hours per mile, as I said. Why can't you just flick a switch to make it turn into this? It's all software based. It seems easy to do, but there we go. As another example, in the real world, I drove just as a test down to my parents' house in the Tesla Model 3, the standard range plus and I got 197 watt hours per mile going down there because I deliberately drove economically, effectively parked behind a truck or a coach for 200 miles of the 250 I was doing on the way there and just left autopilot to do the rest. On the way back, I drove at uh, normal motorway speed, shall we say, and I got closer to 267. So clearly how you drive has a substantial effect on the efficiency, just like it does with miles per gallon. Now, how do we change that to that? Well, it is very straightforward and it effectively just involves the number 1000. Let me wipe this off now so I can show you using a formula because that's even more exciting, isn't it? Yep, all that work, gone, gone, gone. Ah, thirst to work is all this teaching. Right, let's imagine we have four miles per kilowatt hour and we want to convert that into watt hours per mile. Basically, we take the big number 1000 
and then divide that by the miles per kilowatt hour, four, which effectively gives us 250. So 1000 divided by the miles per kilowatt hour gives you the watt hours per mile. But what if we want to do it the other way round? That's pretty straightforward as well. All we have to do is get a rubber, wherever I put it, there we go. Take that out. Instead of that divided by that, we do that divided by that. So 1000 divided by 250 is four. It's literally that straightforward. So let's put that to the test. What is 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour in watt hours per mile? Quite straightforward, 1000 divided by 2.8 equals... Is 357.1429. There we go, 357.1429 watt hours per mile. So if we did 1000 divided by that, it would equal that. So all you have to remember is 1000 divided by that number gives you the other number. Literally as straightforward as that. Right, we're pretty much done. Uh, thanks for watching and please, please do subscribe. Nearly 70% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribers. So let's see if we can change that. And of course, don't forget the comparison tool on smarthomecharge.co.uk's website. I believe it will genuinely be helpful to some people out there. Uh, that will be in the description below, of course, with the link and as a pinned comment. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to Mr. Whiteboard and, of course, to for the maths. Uh, I'll see you soon.